Hi, and welcome to another episode of Engineering Roundtable. I'm Chris. Uh, today we're going to be talking about solar power. So I'm headed to Burning Man here in about 20 hours. And uh, for my project this year, I wanted to do something with a weather balloon, a bunch of LEDs, and uh, a solar powered system because obviously I don't have anything to plug into out in the desert. Solar power, even though it requires about five simple components, can be very tricky uh, when you come up against the engineering trade-offs that you have to consider uh, when designing your system. So the five basic components of this system are the load, which in this case are these LEDs. They draw about six and a half amps, and I have a mechanism to turn that down. I have a battery, obviously supplying the power. I have a charge controller that is controlling the current coming in from the solar panel and the current going out to the load. I have a custom controller in this box that I designed myself uh, that pulse switch modulates these LEDs and obviously a giant solar panel. So when you're designing a solar power system, you have three main components that you're worried about. Your load, your battery, and your solar panel. Uh, usually, you start with a known load. So in my case, the load is the LEDs. So I bought the LEDs, uh, I hooked them up to a power supply, and I saw what the max current draw was going to be. From that, with that information, I could design down through the rest of my solar panel, or solar power system. Uh, in my case, I bought the LEDs and I found out uh, that they draw about two amps per strand, which is a lot. And I have uh, six strands on there. So I didn't necessarily want to be driving 12 amps uh, all the time, all night long, um, because that is a lot of power. Um, so I decided to build my own custom uh, load controller, which sits in between the load and the battery. In my case, it's a MOSFET with an Arduino running a pulse width modulation so that it's actually getting 12 volts uh, on a pulse modulated signal. Uh, and I'll talk more about what that means later, but I was able to get the power draw down to six amps. And now I had to choose a battery. You take uh, your load, in my case six amps, and you multiply it by how long it will be running per day. Uh, so in my case, it's gonna be running all night and I said that's about eight hours if I turn it on late. So that gives me about 48 amp hours. It essentially means it can, uh, a battery can deliver one amp for 48 hours, or in my case, six amps for eight hours. In solar power systems, there are two kinds of batteries. There is a sealed lead acid, uh, which is the kind you'll find in your car, and there is a marine deep cycle. Uh, those are the two big ones. Uh, the sealed lead acid is designed, uh, a car battery for example, is designed to deliver a lot of current for a short amount of time and then be recharged immediately. So when you start your car, it delivers a lot of cranking current. Uh, your car starts up and the alternator takes over and recharges your battery. And that's why they last so long. So those are not designed to be drained deeply. They're not designed to be to run out of energy and then come back up. To replace that, I bought a deep cycle battery, which is a boat battery. Deep cycle batteries are designed to deliver a lot of current for a long time and then recharge slowly at the same rate. But how many amp hours should that battery be? Obviously, it's got to be more than 48. Um, but one of the quirks about uh, uh, these lead acid batteries is that you don't want to be uh, draining them more than 50% of their life. Uh, so if I have a 48 hour amp hour battery, I don't want the, the battery I have to, to go under about 48 amps. I'm gonna have to double it. Um, so what I ended up with was a 109 amp hour battery. Even if I leave it on too long and it drains it even more, I've still got a few amp hours uh, left in the battery so that it never goes under 50% of its, of its life. So now I need to choose a solar panel that's going to charge for about 11 hours of sunlight and it's gonna put all of that 48 amp hours back into the system. For that calculation, I take what I require and I divide it by how much sun I'm gonna have. So 11 hours of sun, that equals about 4.36 amps per hour of sun. So I need a solar panel that is gonna deliver charge at more than 4.36 amps. In order to, uh, to actually purchase a solar panel, I'm gonna need some number in watts. 
uh, because that's how solar panels are sold normally. Uh, you'll buy a 70 watt, 100 watt. Um, so I need something that is capable of delivering 4.36 amps, but I need to know the wattage. So what I do is I take that 4.36 and I multiply it by the normal charging voltage of a battery, which is 14 volts. And that comes out to about 61 watts. So I know I need a 61 watt solar panel that is able to, to deliver 4.36 amps uh, closed circuit current. I found a cheap 80 watt solar panel on Amazon, which can provide about 5.1 amps of current at a time, and obviously uh, charges at a little higher voltage. Um, so I'll, be, I'll have plenty of power during the day to recharge these batteries. Now, the solar panel I got is 80 watts, it's 5.1 uh, amps, but it will actually output about 18 volts at a time. These uh, deep cycle batteries can be kind of finicky. Uh, they don't like um, to be drained too far, they don't like to be charged too quickly, they don't like to be overcharged, they don't like to be undercharged. I require something in between the battery and the solar panel to protect that battery. Uh, because I don't want to just hook 18 volts to it and run it all the time because that degrades the life of the battery pretty, pretty quickly. So I needed to buy a charge controller. It's assumed that you know what you have as a battery and what you have as a solar panel before you buy a charge controller and then what, uh, how you purchase your charge controller uh, is you'll be given a wattage for how much load it should put out uh, what voltage it should charge to and because these are standard SLA or standard lead-acid batteries uh, Charge controllers are actually pretty cheap and simple. I connected it between the battery and the solar panel and I actually connected it to the load as well um, Because the charge controller is actually fused so my battery will never draw more than about seven and a half amps But I still haven't talked about this load controller uh, this is not a standard thing like the batteries or the solar panels. This is something uh, that I built specifically for this project. Like I said earlier, when I plugged in these strands of LEDs, I found that at constant DC 12 volts, uh, each, LED, each strand pulled about 2 amps. And since I didn't want to be delivering 12 amps uh, to the, the project, uh, I had to get that down. I didn't want to be buying more batteries and more solar panels just to make it a little bit brighter. I used Spark Fun's uh, MOSFET power control uh, kit uh, to pulse width modulate the LEDs. And what that looks like is I have my 12 volts coming from uh, the battery. Uh, across that, I put the LED, and then that is connected to the MOSFET on the MOSFET power control. The MOSFET then connects to a pulse width modulation pin on an Arduino. And it has a pull down resistor, so it's normally off. Assume that this single LED represents my array of hundreds of LEDs. Uh, what this does is it isolates, uh, or it uses the Arduino to toggle this 12 volt supply on and off. It toggles the flow of current. So if I were to send this pin high, I would just get a constant high current. But because it can pulse width modulate this, um, the 12 volt supply going to this LED starts to look like a square wave. The thing is about this, the pulse width modulator is I can set this frequency. I can set how much of this uh, square wave is positive and how much is negative. So if I want it at 75%, it's gonna look more like this. So a lot more time positive, a lot less time negative, or a lot less time at zero. And that has the effect of making the LEDs brighter. I could have just hard coded it into the uh, Arduino, uh, a pulse width modulation of uh, you know, 75, 100. Uh, but what I did is instead is I connected this to, I connected the Arduino to a potentiometer at an analog pin, and I used that potentiometer to set the level of uh, the pulse width modulation, so I can actually change the brightness of the LEDs on the fly with a knob on the controller. I have the LEDs, which are connected to the load controller, which is in this box. 
Uh, the load controller has two power switches, one that disconnects the battery from the load controller and one that di disconnects the LEDs from the load controller. And here's the potentiometer I was talking about that changes the pulse width modulation. I can connect the battery and the Arduino. The LEDs come on and then I can dim the LEDs with this potentiometer. Uh, the charge controller is then subsequently hooked to the battery and the solar panel. Right now, it's charging, even on the lights from this video, uh, it's charging the battery uh, through the charge controller. If the battery voltage goes too high, it'll cut off the charge. If I drag too much uh, current on the load, it will cut off the charge to protect the battery. And this charge controller has the added bonus of having a fuse in line with the battery. So if I were ever to short something out in the load, uh, or something were to go wrong with the, the charge regulator, uh, the battery will not be damaged.